What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today we have a very special guest. She is currently based out in Tulum right now, enjoying the beauty of life. She is an amazing soul. She is a conscious living guide, holistic dietitian. She is a tremendous coach, and she's also a Puma trainer. Please help me welcome the one and only Monica Arenas. How's it going? Hey, so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on the podcast. We, yeah, really we appreciate it. it. Really, uh, really looking forward to this one. So I know we kind of uh, talking a little bit behind the uh, these scenes before we started the podcast. So you're out there in Tulum, um, enjoying it. I would love for you to dive in a little bit on that, on why you stayed out there. I would love for our listeners to hear that. And then we can kind of take things off from there. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I have been in Miami for the last 16 years of my life where I was really hustling and working and doing all all the things and structured a lot of, of great work for myself. And then um, we were uh, one of my businesses is a fasting program. So I do a monthly new moon fast called the Luna Fast. I guide people in and out of detoxification and we were going to do a retreat in June in Bali. And I was going to get certified in Kundalini yoga there wow. as well. So Amazing. I was going to do my own retreat. And then I was going to host a retreat in Bali. And COVID, <laughs> of course, they moved it to November. And I came out to Tulum for my birthday, and it, which was in August, with my business partner and some friends. And then we realized, well, why do we need to go all the way to Bali? We can just take a 90-minute flight here to Tulum. And so um, I came here pretty much at the end of September. I was planning on traveling anyways. I put everything in storage. I came out here, kind of prepare for the retreat. And as the months passed, you know, the whole wave came back and, and it just got really sticky to be hosting large groups. So we decided again, you know, I just don't think 2020 was the year for retreats. So we postponed it and uh, our, luckily our program's online. So um, I ended up staying around. And my business partner went back, our friends went back, and I, um, I have this really big calling to be here right now, energetically, and it's been really beautiful. I mean, luckily, I work online, and a lot of my, my clients are online, and my team, you know, we're, we're all over, so um, it's been a beautiful experience. I would say it's been an interesting transition uh, emotionally, you know, ex just flowing with all of that, as I was telling you earlier. And, and I'm just excited. I, I found a really, really great home here until May. So I'll be back and forth between Miami and Tulum um, working and creating, creating some nice new content for 2021. So that's great. And, uh, you know, I, on a personal level, I don't think I've announced this on the podcast, podcast yet but I, I'd like to dive into how that emotional experience was for you coming from Miami down to Tulum because I'm actually moving to Puerto Rico in June you know full-time so I would really like to get your take on you know how that was to you know f kind of selfishly almost you know see what I'm going to get myself into a little bit here. Yeah yeah that's a really great question um, so I'm Colombian. My my mom and dad are Colombian. I was raised back and forth Colombia every every year, summer, uh, holidays. So I grew up extremely Latin in a Latin household, and also in California. So I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, so I have really good English, but then I'm also fluent fluent Latin. So coming here to Mexico. Um, it wasn't too different in that sense. However, coming to Tulum, I mean, in terms of like the culture and adapting to Latin America and, you know, the mm -hmm. crazy driving and all that stuff. Um, but the, the town that I'm in, which is Tulum, it's very small. And five years ago, it was nothing compared to what it is. Oh, it's, now. it's blown up. It's really blown up. It's I crazy. I still need to go. Yeah, it was, it was hammocks, you know, so it's it's a very different uh, time right now where everyone is kind of moving here and the infrastructure isn't created for that. So uh, it's been very eye opening seeing, you know, the water quality, the lands, like how they're building the demand and how it's impacting the locals. Um, obviously, gentrification is a thing and, and there's a lot of ins and outs, but um Emotionally for me coming here, I built tribe and I built community in Miami and that's my family because, you know, my family is all over. And so my friends really are my core, my core team and coming here with my business partner who was going to move here, she ended up moving back. And so I literally feel like 
they just came and said, okay, here you go. Go to Tulum. See you later. <laughs> and I'm, me by myself? Like, are you sure? And luckily I'm a social person <laughs> and I make friends and mm. I love networking and I love connecting. And, you know, I've been working out and just in really awesome gyms and, and just connecting with really, really cool people. Great gatherings here. Very conscious. I mean, it's been, this is 5D. This is, I mean, so, so, um, I feel for me because I was in the very 3D world in the US where it's like business and work and then the shutdown and, and all of that was just busy, 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 busy in a way. Um, coming to a space where it's more in that feminine energy where it's just more in flow and things just happen and they happen very fast. Um, felt like a little bit of an emotional catch up for me these last three months being in Tulum where the forefront wasn't so hustle and bustle. It was more just being in my own element. So um, even Puerto Rico, you know, I think that kind of, you know, island life oh, yeah. is a little more chill and slow. There's that, there's that catch up phase in the beginning where you're getting used to, used to it, but yeah. it's been great. Yeah. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited for, for that aspect of it, you know, is to kind of get out of that world that you were talking about, right? Where it's just like business, like maybe a fun activity to get your mind off of work and then like sleeping so that you can go back to work, you know, and, and kind of having a little bit more free time to be able to enjoy some of the things that I used to enjoy back when we weren't so busy, you know, and uh, luckily, I, I mean, I feel bad that they kind of just left you there. Luckily, you know, in Puerto Rico, I have a, a pretty good infrastructure of friends and, and, people who I consider my family. So it shouldn't be so hard of a transition. Thank, thank God. Thank you to all of those people who have been helping me out through this crazy process. I mean, See, now he's leaving me. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody is still getting left behind. I, I mean, I'll be coming back. I'll be doing the same thing that you're doing, Monica, you know, like bouncing back and forth, spend a week here, three weeks there, but you know, just getting out of the craziness, yeah. especially with kind of how things are in, in America. Now, I think there's, yeah. there's no better time for, for a step away and a deep breath. And I really got to say, like, it's really it, it's really nice to see how passionate and like the energy that you're pushing out here on the podcast. Just you talking about how happy you are right now and, and knowing where you need to be at this right place at the right time. So what was that first sign that you felt or, you know, that you experienced that told you this is where I need to be right now? This is my home right now currently. Oh, man. Okay. That's, that's a pretty good question. It's very deep. Um, well, first I do want to say like, I've seen everyone relocating, you know, everyone's, I mean, I think New York is a ghost town right now. Oh, they're getting and smashed. Coming down to Florida. Yeah. They're getting smashed. Over a million people have left yeah, since, since COVID hit. Yeah. Cali is like going East. It's been a, a whole shift, right. In, in, in everyone wants to go be in a, in a space where they're more in, in a, chill environment you know not it, life is more than that and i think that's what covid taught us i think that's what 2020 really awakened us to um and so it was a little bit so when i first came here i came with a core group of friends and we were just renting together and working and it was really it was almost like that glamorous to loom life like they were like oh yeah you know you're like on the beach laptop yeah. you know so it was really really fun and then art with me came and i had another a lot of my team come and they held a retreat so it was like back to back to back just events um it really hit me in december when everyone kind of left and then i was here working on myself and still doing my thing and a friend that i was speaking with told me one night he goes you know home is where the heart is and that's when it really, it reminded me because I felt a little lost at first. And I was like, well, what am I doing here? Like, I know our retreat and then our retreat got canceled. It got postponed. I'm like, what, what, what is all this instability all of a sudden? Because I'm, I'm someone that I've come to realize after these few months, like I love having a solid home consistency. Like I bring my altar, I bring all my things, my workout equipment, like everything is there. So to be floating and moving my stuff every two to three weeks was a lot for me to feel. Um, and just really, it felt unstable. So, um, you know, it was that moment when really he told me, you know, home is where the heart is. And he's a very, he's a big traveler. And I was like, you know what, you're right. And I, I really sat with that and I tuned back into my daily rituals and self-care and awesome. made that feel like home, you know, and not be so attached. And that's been a big lesson too. It's like not attaching ourselves to anything. 
system. It yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I think having that detachment from, especially all of these material things that we're so used to distracting us from some of the, maybe the, the real issues going on in our lives or the real things that we should be contemplating. Um, it's, it's been really nice to kind of step away from some of that stuff, you know, like, and you know, living here in Miami, if you want a distraction, you find one any minute of any day, Easy, you know, so having that removed and, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, like really being able to focus and become aligned with like the things that are going to really move the needle in our lives has brought upon like a ton of, I mean, how, how would we, how would I phrase that? Like a ton of great value that I didn't even really expect there to even be on the other side of that. You know, I thought that I needed those distractions because it was the only way that I could, you know, escape from the, you know, hustle and bustle of how things were pre COVID and being able to really remove myself from that and say, okay, like if I do focus on these three things that I really think are going to move my career and only these three things, what's, what's really on the other side. And, you start to realize like, well, it's not as scary as you may have thought, you know? And I think it also did a lot, a huge favor. I think, I think as much as, you know, COVID does have its really hardships and it's affected a lot of people in a negative way. I think it's also had a positive in the sense that I think it also made people realize also to like why they were meant to be here on earth, you know, what shifts they need to make, what's the new approach, get themselves out of unhappy places that they were never happy in that if COVID never happened, they probably would have still been there for God knows how long, maybe the rest of their career or their life. And this made them realize this is not for me. I'm awakened. This is what I really want to do. Um, and I think it's given a lot of people that opportunity to really go seek themselves and just figure out who they are as a person, build their character and just really discover, you know, the beauty around us um, and realize again, going back to, you know, all these distractions, like, they're just distractions. They're things that we don't need, things that we don't really need to, you know, make time for um, or get ourselves out of the importance and go distract ourselves. It's made us realize, you know, what really is important in front of us, around us, with us, and um, how we can con continue forward on building on that, you know, for our, our next chapter of our lives. A hundred percent. I really look at 2020 as a global ego death. And I myself also was really processing that because leaving my work the way I was working, the way I was doing everything to come here, I didn't realize how much I identified with my career, my successes or whatever you want to call it or you think is a success, right? You're like, oh, I did this and I did that and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but it doesn't define me. None of that defines me. You know, what does define me? What makes me who I am and what, what, how do I show up not only for myself, but for others? And so that I think everyone is experiencing in some way or another, whether they're, um, you know, quarantining or whether they're finding new work or finding their deeper purpose. It's, it's really, deta again, detaching ourselves from who we were and into what we're creating. And, um, in March of last year, I actually, right when the pandemic happened, I was scheduled for a um, peyote ceremony. And I, it all just kind of happened at the same time. And I remember sitting in that ceremony and realizing that in the spiritual, in the spiritual community, that we've always talked about the new earth and the new earth and, you know, all these things are coming about. And I realized 2020 COVID is like, I saw the whole destruction of the matrix and you know the real light warriors stepping up and, and a lot of people just like waking up and creating the new earth and that's when it, it hit me and i'm like oh wow this is that's now so if you, you don't know, mind me, if you don't mind me asking what are some of the things that you've realized for yourself what are some of the what is what is basically that new um how do i say it? what what defines you what have you discovered to define you and what have you realized through this growth, through this journey, that this is who I really am? What are some of those things? Yeah, so this is actually very um, personal, but I'm so excited to talk about this. Music. Um, wow. Music is something that I 
barely, barely post on social media. I'm like getting more comfortable uh, now doing it. So doing it, playing in front of others. So I grew up, uh, I did like seven years classical piano. I started playing guitar at 14, kind of gave it up, picked it back up. Uh, my mom passed when I was 16. So I then used guitar and, and self-taught myself how to play to process my mom's passing in my 20s. And as a young girl, I love being on stage as a teacher with fitness. I mean, it's, that's where I'm happy at, you know, I'm a Leo. I love being, you know, guiding and doing all the things. And, um, I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be an artist, you know, I wanted to not maybe pop singing, but I just like Shakira. I was like such a fan. And <laughs> I was a fan just, as well. I definitely, right? yeah, I definitely was <laughs> a fan. Am. I think we were all Shakira. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Oh, sorry. Did I lose you guys? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. And so, um, so I just kind of gave it up. I gave it up. I found a career and work and nutrition and fitness. And I absolutely love what I do. That's my Dharma. There is no question about that. I'm here to help others live a healthier life. Um, yet I created all these things and work and it just it wasn't really t tuning me into that heart fulfillment space, right? It was very logic brained for me, or this feels good in this realm. But tuning into the heart was where I, I found that music was something that was really that I want to share with the world. And so I've, um, in the last year, I really started, I started playing for others. And I had a, a whole other experience in 2019 at the end. Um, I had my breast implants removed. And that's something that I had for 10 years that I didn't realize was blocking my heart chakra and my throat chakra. So that just allowed me to feel confident in myself again, love myself again enough to, to want to play for other people. And um, that's part of where I'm going now and like redirecting my whole business and feed me health, which is like my umbrella of, of my work. It's, um, helping people tune into their senses and tune into their bodies and love themselves a little bit deeper. So basing that around self-love. And so, um, yeah, music's been a huge, huge, huge part of it. And being in Tulum, so many amazing artists and I'm co-creating with with other musicians and I even ended the year in two events. I sang at, in a dome in Holistica, which was just beautiful. And then I, I did the opening ceremony for another hotel here wow. in front of a, in front of like 60 people and played and played Crushing a few it. songs. And it was very <laughs> special for me. I was like, wow, like that's goals right there. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I truly believe that it's super important that you have these outlets, right? Outside of what you do for work or what you do with your family, right? Just for you to be able to find some sort of creativity, right? To, to have something yeah. that you can go to, to take your mind off of all of the stuff that might be bringing a lot of stress in there. And so many people, and we can kind of circle this back to even removing yourself from big cities like Miami or New York, right? It's like getting yourself out of this chaos that we constantly want to put ourselves into because again, to your point about ego, right? It kind of fuels that ego. Like I've brought, I've been able to, you know, uh, get this much money as my income. I've been able to, you know, network with these people, all of that stuff, which is all well and good, but doesn't really help you as the individual necessarily find out who you really are and become in tune with that. These outlets like you found in music are, are so important for people. Yeah. And I, that's another thing that I think has really been a positive throughout this whole situation that we've found ourselves in with COVID is that people are really starting to, to, to come to the realization of what these outlets are for them, you know, and starting to kind of really dive into those passions that maybe don't move the needle economically for them so much, right? But, but do so emotionally. Yes, very fulfilling. And it's it's beautiful to see that. Like, I love seeing everyone's transition, um, especially like in, in person on social media, just all together. We're all we're all getting that face lift and, and, you know, just taking off the masks in so many ways. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like letting 100%. go and just being yourself and loving ourselves for who we are. And, and that's what is being asked of us at this point. It's like, just show up exactly who you as who you are and like, know that that is enough. And that is medicine for for you and for others to receive you amen to that mm. uh speaking of medicine i you mentioned peyote and i'm big on i've never actually used peyote but 
I, I'm big on, you know, taking uh, mushrooms and other psychedelics like DMT when necessary to, again, right, kind of reduce some of that white noise that we have in our life and, and kind of realign with the things that might be important to us and, and open up new possibilities to, to what is out there. I've always been interested in, in utilizing peyote as sort of that uh, medicine that you need for the soul. If you don't mind sharing, like, what was your experience with that and, and what were kind of some of the takeaways that you had throughout that whole encounter? Yeah, so <clears throat> peyote is is considered the grandfather medicine. So ayahuasca is the grandmother, and this is more of that masculine um, grandfather medicine. Um, that ceremony was my first and only time working with peyote, and I was very fortunate to be um, invited by a dear sister of mine who was working is working with a shaman who's also been you know, he's native to Mexico and has worked with peyote his whole life. Uh, so it was a very beautiful, authentic ceremony. It was uh, almost 60 people. No one canceled. Incredible. She was like, I, everyone's going to cancel. Like COVID just hit and we were all there. Like it was a huge, huge circle. And it was, you know, started at 7 p.m., ended at 8 in the morning. And then you're still integrating everything the next day. Um it was, like I said, I, I understood exactly my role and what was going to happen in, I guess, I felt it, but it was very logical. I think I caught up to it emotionally at the end of the year when I finally got here to Tulum. But in that moment, I, I just remember having these visuals. It, it is similar to ayahuasca where you do purge, you, you get well, uh, you release anything that needs to come out, and then also you, you do have visions. Um, you know, and so that that night is actually it's an interesting story. So I was in Hawaii for about two weeks launching my Luna Fast program with my business partner. We were there. And then I went to a leadership training in Arizona. That's when everything started shutting down. And then I took a, a red eye to Miami, slept an hour and then went to ceremony. Wow. Incredible. So I was just kind of like on, on all these different I don't even know. It was just like I was called to show up and I did. And um, it's very beautiful in those ceremonies. You get to co-create the, the flower mandalas and the space. And, and it's just very community, that community energy. And Miami actually has a very beautiful community for that. So um, I didn't have a backrest. I didn't, I, I really toughed it out. And when I sat with it, it kicked my butt. Like I had not slept. So I just was out and my friend asked are you gonna share a song and I said yeah I'll share a song I'd love to sing and my first time you know singing in front of a big group in a ceremony you know and, and when she asked when she asked, she's like are you ready to sing and I'm like no no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, just, I couldn't even like speak English at that moment I, it hit me so hard because I was so exhausted I think physically and then you know later throughout the night they just the energy and the way that the facilitators take care of everyone it's so nurturing it's so loving and they really hold space and i was able to kind of sit back up and, and feel much stronger and so when she asked me if i wanted to share a song i i did and i was able to and it was uh it was very very beautiful that's when i really felt like okay i'm really tuned into this path like continue continue sharing music and then again that visualization of just seeing the earth just melting away I felt like New York City was just melting into the core of the earth. I saw Trumps, all the politicians, everything was just like melting, <laughs> melting, melting, breaking down like a huge fire earthquake. And I was like, holy shit. You know, like I called my dad like a week later. And I'm like, this is what I'm here for. Like, this is part of the new earth. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, I get it. And I was just, I couldn't explain it, but I, I knew intuitively, you know, we're all here together for a reason and we can't sit in fear. We have to obviously feel and allow, but then also move forward and get excited because we're, we're creating a new way. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I really do think that these hallucinogenics are, are such a powerful tool that you can really use in order to kind of dissolve some of that boxed in mindset or, or like 
predetermined thought that you have about a situation or about a scenario that you either are currently going through or feel like you're about to experience. And I, I'm really excited to kind of see where the the whole movement with hallucinogenics goes and with these plant medicines, because there's really no, no better time for, in my mind, uh, uh, at least small portion of the population to start really, you know, experiencing some of this stuff and starting to see how connected we really are and, and how our perception of things is actually quite different than what might actually be out there in reality. Yeah. Absolutely. And I find that the most important thing, and I've had a few conversations with uh, facilitators, is the integration part. Because you'll find people get into it and they're like, oh, and I did this, and then then they do it again, and do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. But what about integrating that one it's taught you and showed you? It's under the, the right supervision, under the right people. You can really transform and heal so much and just release in what I feel throughout the years as, as working with different medicines and, and things like this it's it's we're like an onion we're just like releasing all these layers we don't even realize how tense crunched up we are holding ourselves guarded like don't hurt me and you're just <laughs> like and it's like it's okay like, mm. it's okay just like let it go it's all good it's the past you know and and just just own yourself up because I think compassion, self-forgiveness, and self-love is is the theme of, of this awakening for us, yeah. you know, I, and it's going to help us really build on it in a, in a stronger platform. I really love how you mentioned all that and how you were saying about, like, a lot of people just doing it, doing it, doing it instead of, like, you know, hey, you know, that one time you did it, what did I learn from it? And I think that's so important because you see that with everything in life, with other things. People do, 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 do over and over again. Think that thinking that just by doing it you're gonna get the answers you're gonna fix a problem and it's 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 not it's not that it's just you have to be able to learn from what you did and now apply what you learned and now carry that on through your journey before maybe even doing it again make sure you apply what you learned from that one experience and then continue moving forward and and if you need to do it again do it again but I think that's so powerful because you do see that often especially when you when you're working with people in big cities and stuff like that it's just boom, 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 boom. Let me just get it in. Let me get it off the checkbox or let me do it again just to check it off because, you know, everybody's doing it or I need to do it or because, yeah, you know, it's the new cool thing to do or because it's it's what's called the healing. So let me just do it. And they don't really get to really deeply experience the true benefits behind that. Um, with that being said, I wanted to bring something up that we kind of mentioned, that you mentioned a little bit earlier on. And I think it's going to be benefit a lot of people here, especially uh, speaking to the women, especially here in Miami, you mentioned hmm. getting your breast implants removed. And I really would love to dive into that because you did mention about your heart chakra and your throat chakra. And I want to know more about what that means and, and really the intention behind you moving those breast implants, especially uh, for a lot of our listeners out today, uh, out here listening from these big cities, um, especially in Miami, where you see that pretty often. Pretty often. <laughs> it's a norm. Yeah. It is the norm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for, for wanting to touch up on this. Cause this is actually something that I want to bring more into light and talk more about because, um, kind of tying everything that we were talking about a second ago, this whole wave of numbing ourselves. Like, I think we just start numbing ourselves, right? Whether it's medicine or drugs, synthetic drugs, alcohol, food, um, healthy habits, you know, it, everything, we just kind of start numbing and, Putting things in our body is a form of numbing, uh, especially going through a surgery and putting something inside of your body is very numbing, whether you see it in the moment or not. Um, for me, I was 22. I just turned 22. I was a bartender. I, I worked in nightlife for years. It paid for my college, my nutrition degree, and I was totally the outcast girl I you know I'd show up with like not you know not ironed perfect hair and I you know was very like myself and I was there to bartend and, and and I at one point was like maybe I need boobs like maybe I need to I need to do something here and um I was also in a space where I didn't love myself you know I went to a life of big lessons at a young age. I was in a, in a bus crash with my family and my mom passed in front of me. And oh, so wow. I was the only, one of the only people 
have surgery. And um, again, numbing was very normal for me. I mean, for anyone, I didn't know how to process something so so profound for me. So um, being in an un- unhealthy relationship was a part of it. Feeling like I needed that in order to be loved was a part of it. Um, those were the deep thoughts that were inside of me. The, the outside persona was like, oh yeah, I totally want boobs. That's cool. You know, and so I paid for it cash and did it. Didn't tell my family. Didn't tell anyone. I that must have been a surprising Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no one, so my uncle was always kind of looking, but he never talked about it. No one ever talked about it to me. It wasn't until I went to get them removed that I called my dad two years ago in 2019. And I'm like, hey, and my, my partner at that time in 2019 was like, you need to tell your dad. Because I'm like, I'm not telling anyone, like, F it. I'm just going through the surgery. It's not a big deal. He's like, you got to tell your dad. Like, this is a part of your healing. And I'm like, okay. So I call my dad. And I'm like, look, I just want to let you. It's so awkward. I'm like, I just want to let you know, like, I, I'm getting my breast implants removed. And he's like, you want to get breast implants? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want to get my breast implants removed. I have breast implants. He, goes, he was like confused. He was really confused. He's like, what do you mean? And I'm he like, thought that you just went through like some sort of growth spurt late in life <laughs> like at 22. You know what? I, I cover, I actually, when I got them, I felt so uncomfortable with them. They weren't even that big. I got like a cup size, like 250 cc's, like a, literally a cup size. Um, they were just too perky. Like they, they it wasn't like, and I, that was the smallest size. I went to like five doctors. They were all like over 300 cc's and I have, I have a thick frame, like I have muscles. So, so for me, it just looked a little extra. I already have curves on my lower half. It, it, um, it gave me that figure eight, but ultimately it just, I felt uncomfortable in my own skin, you know? And it's funny because I didn't th- realize that. And so I covered it up and I'd wear like those big shirts and whatever. And sometimes I'd come out with cleavage, but my fan, it wasn't enough for my family to be like, What's going you on? know, from zero to yeah. And I, I don't think anyone wants to be that creepy uncle. Like, Hey, you, did you get your boobs done? Like, you know, you're like, excuse me. And I'm Colombian. Let's remember that. So it's also very normal, you know, to if do. it does happen. Um, and so, It wasn't until my friend, one of my good, good girlfriends, she came out in 2019 and was like, my breast implants are killing me. And I looked at her and I said, what? She goes, yeah, I'm dying. I'm having like, my body is breaking down on me. I'm dying. I need this shit out. I don't know if I can curse. Sorry. Um, Curse away. I swear like a sailor. So it's fine. I need to get this shit out of me. Let it out. I just just watched her. I I was like, you're going to pay 10 grand and go through this. Like, okay. Like I'd like to see And her and a friend did it. And just observing her, I understood that what was in my body was very toxic and so because of her i started going in facebook groups and there's a great uh facebook group called breast implant illness by nicole for anyone listening that might want some support Eighty thousand women i mean you go in there and it's like holy shit people are suffering can't get out of bed can't work disabled autoimmune diseases super sick um between So between me getting them and uh, I got them at 22, probably around 24, 25, my hair texture started changing. My hair started thinning out. Um, I started gaining weight that I couldn't understand. Like it was just this layer of like inflammation that I couldn't work off or eat off. Um, My blood levels started changing. So I had issues with my thyroid. I had issues with my um, iron. I I had all sorts of blood issues that no doctor... I mean, I had a doctor prescribe me thyroid medication because wow. they're like, oh, your thyroid's kind of off. Like, here, just here, just take this. I'm like this. No, 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 no. Like, I'm not blaming genetics. I'm not this. This is not normal. I'm a very healthy person in general. So um, observing that and then seeing my friend was enough for me to say, well, what happened was actually someone hit my car And I got a check for like five grand and I was like, okay, I'm going to put this check right here and deposit this. I want to have my excellent surgery like 
two months from now. See, in that so, situation, you're probably like, thank God I was in Miami because that's where <laughs> it usually happens, the car accidents. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was perfect. I was like, thank you. And the, the guy, well, whatever, it was a funny story. He got caught. He did a hit and run, oh, and shoot. then his car broke. <laughs> ah, <laughs> karma's a bitch. That sucks. Karma's a bitch. So I had a on my windshield. Wait, but, 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 wait. I, did you see his car break? Did, did he take off and then you saw his car slow down? Oh, uh, how ironic. Right how funny would that be if you're like, eh, he's right <laughs> over there. Like, I'm, I, 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 I'm kind of curious. What are some, do you know, like, what are some of the mechanisms that uh, were causing you to have all of these issues yeah, from the yeah, breast yeah, implants? I'm, gonna I'm totally going to explain all, all right, of great. that. Great. Great. I'm getting into the nit grid of the science, um, well, as best as I know. So, you know, I, I did it. And then within that time frame, I started doing my own research. Like, like all right, I have breast implants. Like, what are the repercussions? Like, what does this mean? You know, they tell you after 10 years, you want to switch They tell you, you look really ugly if you don't put in new implants. So you need to do it again, right? My heart goes out to cancer patients and to women that have had breast cancer because that's like a no-brainer for doctors to say, put breast implants in there. Really? And it is the most toxic that you can do because they want to even it out or they want, you know, if you get them removed, you know, for aesthetic reasons, they suggest it, but it is actually the most toxic thing that you could be doing, especially with having a body that's so susceptible after having radiation or chemo or whatever. Um, kind of treatments you do. So, and if you don't mind me asking, out of all the breast implants, which ones are the worst ones? So, saline's the best. Silicone is the worst. I got the gummy. Mine weren't recalled, but there's a lot of implants that have been recalled. Uh, I think just honestly putting anything inside your body that's synthetic nope. over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it took about four or five years for my body to start rejecting them. And that came through with my hair becoming thinner. Um, my, my skin changed. I had drier skin. I didn't have that like rosy cheek vibe. You know, it was, it was very interesting seeing my body change. And I thought, oh, I'm just getting older or, oh, I'm getting in my mid, which is like BS. Like I'm not even in my prime, you know, at that time. <laughs> and, and so I started fasting. I actually started doing water fasting to prepare myself for my explant surgery because I read how breast implants also have, um, they create a lot of parasites and there's a lot of metal toxicity that you get from having them because you, no one really knows what's inside breast implants. And if you look up that list, it's toxic shit. It's very, very, very toxic what's inside. And so like everything, like our human, our bodies, like things seep in and out like cells that seeps out into your bloodstream and that starts to affect your body systemically. So it's another thing to note with breast implants and with anything that's foreign that's in, put inside of your body, your body itself will naturally create a capsule to protect itself from a foreign object. And so that is um, what they they call a M block in the surgery is when you remove that encapsulation, um, you have to completely remove it because that's actually, that's all the toxins built up wow. and your body's immunity trying to protect itself from implants. It's amazing and what the so, body does. Yeah, yeah, it knows what's up. And if you think about it, it's so close to the armpit, the lymphatic system. Yep. So the lymphatic system is completely taxed which is thyroid, um, it, that was like the main thing and that it was affecting my hair, it was affecting my metabolism, it was affecting everything. Um, and so I started doing water fasting, I started documenting like, hey, what are the right things that are best for me to, to detox and prepare myself for surgery? That's when I created my LunaFast program because I, I just dove into the research and I just started fasting. My business partner also had been fasting and she's certified in it, so we just kind of teamed up. And then when I had the surgery, so crazy. I was in a relationship and it just wasn't feeling in alignment. And I ended it the night before my surgery. Wow. And I was like, this is, I'm not recovering with this energy. We were just fighting so much. I was like, I love you so much. And I just have to end this here. And I literally just healed the next day on so many levels. And just coming out of that surgery, I could 
see my skin flush. Like I could see my cheeks rosier. My hair within a week started, it was less frizzy. It's longer than it's ever been. My hair always was like, I had to cut it like up to here because it just wouldn't grow any longer. My hair would fall a lot. My eyebrow hair started growing in. I mean, it was really interesting wow. things that I didn't realize were gone because I had implants, you know? So how many, how much, how many studies are around this and where are some of the top resources that people can start looking up this uh, right now? And maybe you can later on after the podcast provide us with some. Yeah. So I, that I know of like in terms of study study, it's very, very minimal. It's very minimal. And a lot of plastic surgeons are pretty much going to deny breast implant illness is real. Um, there's a few great doctors that are specifically for explant surgeries. And um, that's one of the doctors that I chose, Dr. Rankin, and I'm so grateful for him. Um, breast implant illness by Nicole was really the hub for me. It was about 80,000 women in there doing all the research wow. and throwing in. And there's a lot of articles that you can find in there. Um, I just, I read, wrote, and kept it moving. Like, I didn't want to sink too deep into it. I even left that group after I had my excellent surgery because the energy was really heavy and really dense. And my heart was just, it would break going in there, just reading all of these stories and all these experiences that people are suffering with because of implants. Um, but yeah, I can, I, can, I can share some more resources too. And, and one of the things that I want to create in the next year or two is a detox guide for breast implant illness and to help people prepare themselves for explant surgery or if they've already had them removed, how they can also safely um, bring their body back to balance. we got to have you back on for that, definitely. Oh, yeah, for sure, out. for sure. You mentioned your fasting protocol that you uh, have been implementing, your program. Lunar, it's called Lunar Fasting? Luna Fast. Luna Fast, right. Uh, explain that a little bit to us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure our audience would love to hear it. I, I do a little bit of circadian fasting myself and, and recommend that a lot with my clients, and, and they've seen tremendous results with that. So I, I'd love to hear about uh, the system that you've really implemented and, and how that all came about. Yeah, absolutely. So again, it started around that time. Like I decided I'm, I'm cleaning my body out of this, and I want to prepare myself. So I... I noticed at the time so i have a really really sensitive gut and i used to get upset at that you know i used to be like why is my stomach always hurting or you know i can't eat these foods and those foods and then i realized i'm just a sensitive being and that's a sign that something's not in balance with you emotionally or you, there's something for you to process so it's a blessing when our body is telling us something right we can't get right. mad mm -hmm. at our body so we have to honor it listen to the signals yeah, 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 yeah. And so what I found was, so they used to diagnose me with IBS and, and, you know, all those things. But during the full moon and the new moon, my stomach would flare up and it would just be like bloated. It would be painful. I'd just, I'd be hunched over, not able to eat, just drinking water, drinking water and practically doing my own fast on a full moon and on a new moon. It was just hypersensitive. Um, and I started doing research on that. So I was like, what, what is it about these lunar cycles that are so I'm so sensitive to? And so there are studies that find that parasites and viruses and microbes are actually altered. And our systems, because we're also made of water, um, when the moon is really close during the full moon and the new moon, it is it is greatly affected, just like the ocean is greatly affected. You start to see the great the king tides come through. And so um, I, it all kind of stuck with me, and I was like, oh, wow. So it feels better for me intuitively to not eat during those times. And, um, of course, I started reading about water fasting extended periods. I'd been doing intermittent fasting for a while, but... I came across an article for for um, getting the body rid of parasites with water fasting for three days. And, and I had talked to a few friends that had done water fast three days, five days, seven days, wow. cured their stomach issues, like just a lot of wonderful testimonies. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to give it a shot. In the past, so just so the, everyone watching knows, so I'm a licensed dietitian. And in the past, before, I had major eating disorders as a young girl. So... Juicing, fasting, diets, that was used for the wrong reasons, all right, just to be clear. So I always kind of held back from doing a juice fast again and from doing water fasting because I really found that balance in learning how to eat intuitively, and that's my focus on with my practice. Um, and so I was a little hesitant, but I said, you know what, I'm doing this for 
the purpose of healing and out of love for myself. So with that mindset, I feel like I was able to really support myself. Now, day two of water, the first time I called my friend and I'm like, my teeth are falling out and I'm <laughs> going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, those, <laughs> like, <laughs> those hunger triggers are real. Ooh. Yeah, those are real. And just, just stuff more water. That's it. Yeah. She's like, you're doing fine. You'll be great. Just go to sleep. And I'm like, I just want just to go to yeah, Just go to sleep. <laughs> I'd be dying. Oh, uh, I'm the I'm the worst when I do that because I, when I fast, I, I really try not to even have coffee, and that's like that's my lifeblood, you know. So when when I when I'll do like a 48 hour fast, and I'm I just tell people when I go, I'm just gonna warn you the second I see you, like be on my good side today <laughs> because dude, I think you're gonna, gonna fast be one every single day then. I know, man. Maybe I should. You should call me. You call me chubby, dude. I have, an answer. I have the best solution for you: essential Ooh. oils. And I kid you not, they're immediate mood boosters. Oh and, yeah. Um, I'll have to get some of those recommendations when we finish. I love that sure. product drop. Hangry, hangry's a thing. Oh, hangry's I get, I get real hangry. Mendez will tell you. Oh, big uh, time. Yeah, I. And then I, pro- I met up with my business partner, Bianca, who's also just a dear friend of mine. We had been doing Kundalini yoga for a few years together, sunrise, beachside together. And uh, we we're like, let's create a program and let's, let's do this. Like, let's guide people in and out of water fasting because what I was finding is a lot of people were doing fasts and guiding people through fasts in a way that wasn't ideal. Right. So like, Hey, let's water fast for three days and then meet up at a restaurant and like gorge on pizza bomb, and like yeah. all these bomb meals. And that's mm. you're just putting it. Yeah. Like and toxic, like not toxic. And you shock your body too. Well, that's a number. Right. That's a number one question that I hear from my clients when they're like, well, what, what do I eat after? Like, sh- can I just eat whatever? I'm like, no, you have to have like extremely nutrient dense food that are, tend to be calorically light you know that's that's the way so that because you you just put in all of this benefit all of that work and then you're just going to reverse it by eating a bunch of burgers and pizza and fries and chicken wings so like yep. you know you have to then as you were saying before yeah. with like with all the plant medicine and everything assess the situation and then utilize that information to fuel yourself for success and and for a healthy uh future and transition yeah Yeah. and integrate it and so it's i like that thank you for bringing that up because one of my first programs is a 28 day mind body program where we cut out a lot of foods that people tend to be sensitive to dairy gluten eggs um meats um and then you start adding them back in one at a time just to see how do eggs work for my body how does gluten work for my body it's kind of a food sensitivity self analysis that you can do Um, because you could be eating even carrots and eat carrots and that's a a healthy food and be sensitive to carrots you don't even know it until you take it out. And so the way we designed the Luna Fast program, we ease you in and out of a three-day water fast. So the first day is just fruits and vegetables. We take you into a vegan alkaline diet. And then the next day we go into fruit fasting, which is actually extremely beneficial. And I remember, I'll never forget this. My trainer at like, I don't know, 17 years old was, I told him, I'm going to do a fruit fast. I'm going to cleanse my body. And he's like, are you crazy? That's so much sugar. That's the worst thing you could do for yourself. And it doesn't even doesn't even compare told like, you fruit was fruit. fruit was too much sugar huh that's like it like it was eating a bunch of kit kats that's interesting yeah yeah so we transition you into a fruit day of fasting and then day three is water day four is water and day five is water day three is also the new moon so we prepare you to go into the new moon with self-care rituals and practices and then we do live kundalini yoga and i play music live there too there and then um we do three days of water and then do a day of juice fasting just fruits and then day of a day of fruits and then we add vegetables ancient grains and then um plant-based fats so we add fats last and we keep it light on the protein so I, I really love that how you start from that point and then you kind of work your way back up to that point again Correct. from start to finish really 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 interesting i had another question for you um i've also heard you know it takes time for your your intestines to really clear up um yeah. all the food all the bad stuff that's been in it how long does that usually take um and i know fasting helps but how long does it usually take for all of that to really get out of there before you really start replenishing uh, back food into your into your body? 
So, so in a quick fast, in a three-day fast, within 48 hours, usually your gut is cleansed out. We recommend colonics on day one and day three of the water. So we have you doing colonics and also doing a, a pudding. We call it the Luna Treat to help pull all the toxins from your body because your body after 48 hours, it starts using all the storage within. So if you have any um, any injuries or any inflammation or any any gunk in your body, toxins that have been there, it's going to start mobilizing that out. We've had people reawaken the ayahuasca journeys on their water fast, you know, because it's like mobilizing out of them, you know. So a lot of emotional things come up too, and um, you want to you want to process that also and, and pull it out. So. With fasting, usually I recommend to do three consecutive ones um, to start. If it's something that is autoimmune or someone that wants to get off medication or someone that it's like going deeper, uh, we do private consulting for them also to make sure that they're being guided correctly. And we rec it, it'll depend on the person, but it could be you know six months of fasting, up to a year of fasting. Um, if it's just general, general that you want to just feel healthier and be more vibrant, seasonal. Mm. I do. I recommend at least um, every three months I do it myself, but I usually do it every month or every other month. Yeah. Yeah. You're making me feel a lot better about myself. Now I kind of feel like I'm, 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 I'm like, okay, I'm doing it like every three to four months. I'm kind of following along the same step she is. So I'm like, all right, maybe I need to dial it in a little bit and, and uh, I'll definitely be contacting you uh, soon to kind of yeah. talk about some of that stuff. I'm excited. I'd love to have you guys. Yeah. Back. Yeah. So yeah. If you would... do have an event, please let us know. Cause we would love oh, to. Oh, for sure. For sure. So I'm going to be in Miami on the 20th, and we're going to have a Luna feast for the full moon on the 26th. Okay. So I will give you guys that info. I'd love yeah, for you for guys sure. to come. Yeah, you're going to be here? I'll be here. here. I'll be You'll here. Be yoga. Yeah. yeah, we would love that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we wrap things up here, Monica, I want to, first of all, I want to say, you know, everything you're doing sounds absolutely, you know, tremendous and and a ton of benefit going to the the people that you serve. I don't think, and I mentioned this earlier, I don't think that there's any better time that, you know, we've ever had in our lifetimes since, since we've been around at least where people can really find a tremendous amount of benefit and, and find out a lot about themselves from these types of practices that, that you've kind of been yeah, discussing today. I agree. Um, and I just want to say thank you, you know, on my end as well for, you know, taking your time to come speak to us. And I know um, we've been uh, trying to make this happen. And we finally did. And it's paid off. And, and I know a lot of our listeners are going to be able to read the benefits, you know, after listening to this and be able to use these tools and piece of ad pieces of advice um, on their own lives on these different categories that we touched upon today. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. And yeah, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's my Dharma and I'm just, I'm a channel and a guide for those. And I've gone through my own journey as well. It's, you know, I went through all of it. <laughs> so I think that we're all, we're all leveling up and, um, I'm excited to see what 2021 is going to bring. Cause I know that, like I said, 2020 was just like the, Hey, let's appreciate what we have. And like, with that in 2021 we're gonna re we're gonna re-emerge and um with with new new uh light code transmissions right. inside of it awesome uh where can people reach out to you if they want to learn more about your program or they have any questions about you know uh getting their breasts uh their breast implants removed or just any general questions that they might want to throw your way yeah yeah so i posted a lot about my journey on my instagram channel um that's I'm redoing my website right now, but feedmehealth.com, you can come and see my services and what I offer. Um, like I said, I'm revamping everything around the senses, so I'm super excited to launch all of that, um, different programs for each sense, but primarily Instagram, Feed Me Health, and my YouTube channel, Feed Me Health, also. Um, I have a bunch of videos. I have a video for girls that if they've struggled with their hair falling, I use essential oils and rice water treatment. So I have a lot of really cool recipes for just holistic, um, holistic living and, and keeping yourself feeling good. So it's great. Amazing. I'm definitely gonna definitely, uh, even myself look into some of those oils that you were talking about. Yeah. We'll have to yeah. get some, some recommendations. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah so 
I'm, I'm actually creating, so part of the reason why I feel like I'm here right now and I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting here in this really cool spot for filming. So I'm going to create an essential oil course oh, and just cool. like how to use oils, just the basics, make it really fun, simple for everyone to use. So well, please let that. us know because we'll definitely promote it on our pages as well. We'll definitely Thank love you. to help like that. So I want to wrap things yeah. up. I always like to hit it up with some uh, questions at the end. Um, so okay. question number one, if there's one tool that you would tell somebody to use um, and start implementing into their life to just realign themselves, what would that be? Hmm. I would say breath work and meditation. Love and breath, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, but like, mm. honestly, breath, just breathing into your body and just being still with yourself I know it's like everyone's heard a million times, but the answers are within. Yep, I agree. When you get with yourself, it's just like it comes to you. So find that clarity. Love that. Next question. What's the craziest and wildest experience you've ever had in your career? My career. Hmm. Wildest. Okay. Um, I guess I would say Day. Was it in if Miami? Had ch- <laughs> huh? yeah, where like, else it would Miami? it be? Where else would it be? <laughs> career, my life or my career? Because I'm thinking, career. I'm, my career. Let's say career. We'll say career. Uh, <laughs> I would say a, a awesome experiences with Puma, just like being in in all the Puma events that they've flown us out to, like being in LA, being in Miami. Like those have just been really beautiful experiences for me. Like I, I've been, I feel so honored to be like, you know, representing fitness and, and just working out with like a team of really cool trainers. So even, you know, yep. meeting people like That's yourself. Right. And, uh, don't hype him up that much. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if I had to say like crazy or wild, I'm trying to think like I've been on TV a few times. But, like, that's not, I mean, for me, like the Puma, the Puma weekend experience, like that was like was, really, I heard they get pretty, pretty rowdy. Problem. I heard it's, they get pretty it's rowdy. Fun. It's fun. They're a wild bunch. And then they're up at 9 a.m. working out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Or even earlier. I mean, if this guy's involved, then you gotta be crazy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so last and final question. What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners today in one sentence? Love yourself enough to honor what it's your body and yourself is asking for. Love that. Absolutely love that. Guys, you heard it from Monica herself. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. And guys, go apply. Oh, yeah. Until next time, everybody. Mm-hmm.